we must talk about commodities. Why? Because South Africa is driven by commodities. And this is the important thing. And a lot of people say the true, true currency of the world is the gold price or physical gold. That's why I thought maybe we must spare a little bit of time to look at the gold price. Now, if you look at this, the gold price from 2019 came all the way from 1,256 went almost to 2050 um, in, Mar in August 2020. And since then, it absolutely did nothing. Now, um, somebody actually said, if you look at the gold price, you must always remember, that in, in many years ago, in 1971, uh, President Nixon actually said that he, he wants to break away from gold as the base for currencies. And the moment he did that, he actually made all currencies in the world fiat currencies because they were not bad. Now you get all the guys that say, you can almost say the doom and gloomers, they say, remember that gold is the currency of the future or gold is the commodity of the future. For me, it's quite simple. If you want to buy gold and you use the gold chart like the gold in US dollars, I will say, go to a weekly chart, use a normal line chart and use your normal 40 week moving average to see what the trend is doing and if you look at this you can actually see that although the price is doing absolutely nothing for let's say a year the momentum is still up but what do we see here and strangely enough we also saw it with the rand us dollar chart it was an inverse head and shoulder telling us that the rand can weaken now let's look at the gold chart here there's a left shoulder, there's a head and a big right shoulder, and we're flirting with the 40-week moving average. And the 40-week moving average is sitting at $1,787. So for me personally, if you look at it, um, you must go there from the head, the neckline, and the same thing there. You can extend it there. There you are. If you do that, if the gold price can get above 1,870, yes, then you can see that gold starts to rally and take it up all the way to that previous high of 2,039 or maybe shoot a little bit higher. So for me personally, if I look at commodities and you like gold, this chart actually tells you that this inverse head and shoulder can be quite important. But of course, we can also see that gold can lose momentum because in these kind of markets, the analysts can decide that they want to buy something else and then suddenly gold is out of flavor. And that's why I will use this right shoulder, the low of that right shoulder, there you are. I will say the moment it starts to consolidate below 1,743, then the right shoulder will be wiped off the table and you can maybe see that it actually drifts lower. Remember on gold, physical gold, you need to safe keep it. Um, some brokerage companies, if you buy a, a Kruger Rand, they will safe keep it for you um, and they charge sometimes a little fee for that. So you don't need to go and buy physical bullion. You can buy it in a Kruger Rand and that can maybe help you. But if you want to buy something else, you can always look at new gold as well. New gold is a beautiful exchange traded fund in South Africa where you can buy it. By the way, let's quickly look at new gold. Beautiful source of formation here. And what do we see here? With the gold price, we had an inverse head and shoulder. Here we've got one already paid out. And why is it doing better than physical gold? Because you've got the RAND component here. New gold is a follower of the RAND gold price and that is a classic way to hedge yourself if you really want to. Let's have a look at the big surprise of the year, and that was Brent. Well, I mean, OPEC came out, and can you believe it? I don't know if you can remember it in 2020 March. The price, actually, the future price of Brent oil actually went below zero. <laughs> so it, it cost you money just to store it. But I mean, since then, OPEC came out, um, the Federal Reserve helped as well there. 
stabilize the price and production and what it oil did in the last 18 months it actually caused inflation huge inflation because it started off here right at the bottom 21 dollars a barrel and where is it now it's now at 75 dollars a barrel the big problem is what i don't like about this chart can you see it it comes back to the 40 week moving average it rallies above it it comes back it pulls back and i know the other day i actually did uh, uh, anal uh, analyze it for somebody and when i did with this the person said france but this cannot be i said well my friend this is what i'm seeing i see that oil brand oil is actually moving in a beautiful ascending channel and if it moves in an ascending channel and you project it even further you can actually see and i just want to project it can you believe it look at that oil can then go to 110 us dollars if it stays in this band all the way to the top and what will that do that will trigger inflation and inflation already is rife then that will actually trigger more inflation and markets will probably rally on that but eventually unfortunately high inflation is not good for markets in the beginning yes it is good for markets but eventually it, it, it is a dampening effect on markets because then you need to um, rise interest rates but let's just have a look at this while it is above $74 this momentum is clearly to the upside and yes which share will benefit out of this Sassel. Sassel is doing well. I mean, it's coming from about 25 Rand. I like Brent oil. It looks okay to me. But I don't like it for a, a South African citizen because that will mean that we will just pay more for our petrol at the pump. But I mean, the chart looks beautiful. And where will I get nervous? Only below 69.30. Only below then. It can maybe go lower and it can break out of this channel. Because if it breaks, and remember an asc ascending channel, you can always keep in mind, an ascending channel is always a negative channel. Yes, while the instrument is inside that channel, it is positive, but the moment it breaks, it can take bent oil all the way back to 60 $61. And I think a lot of people will prefer that than a 110 uh, price on the Brent oil. Let's look at silver. I know a lot of people actually invest in silver, either in coin or physical. And for me personally, it's a personal choice. I will prefer rather gold to silver. If you look at this chart, what I don't like about silver is the following. Where gold had an inverse head and shoulder, what does silver have? It has a head and shoulder formation. There you are. So for me, I will say, Here's the 40 week moving average, it's also below that. Look at that negative goodbye kiss. That is not positive. And we on the brink of this next line, this neckline sit at $22. Now for me, it's always a classic. When you see an instrument doing this, yes, it can go much higher, but eventually it will break and it will come back. So be nervous on that. So for me, I'm a little bit nervous on, on silver. I will use this. I'll do that projection again. And where can it take the price to? It can maybe take the price to this zone. And that will be $18.45. So yes, I'm optimistic about gold. I like the gold chart. The silver chart looks a little bit, um, almost you can say, negative to me. And I will only get positive when it breaks above this 40-week moving average again. And that is sitting at $25. Yes, if it breaks above $25, it can go higher. And remember, there is an instrument in South Africa that you can buy if you want to follow silver without keeping the proper uh, commodity. And that is new silver. Let's have a look at platinum is an interesting chart. And remember, if we look at some of the winners of this year, it is Anglo Platinum. It is Northern it is Royal Bafu King. What is the chart telling me? The chart is telling us that it's below its 40-week moving average. That makes me a little bit nervous. And on the other hand, if I look at this, and yes, somebody will say to me now, France, but remember, those mines just don't take out platinum. They take out the 
platinum group of metals. So there's a lot of rhodium, aluminium, a lot of other metals in there that people use in electric cars. That's where the optimism is on platinum. For me, I just look at the chart and I say, what is the chart telling me? The chart is telling me that we're below the 40-week moving average. We've got a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. If we do the projection there on platinum, it doesn't look good to me. It can take the price all the way down. There you are. Can you believe it? There you are. From the head to the neckline, it can take it down to about 635 US dollar. So for me, it's important that platinum stays above this level of 955. If it stays above 955, yes, it can go away all the way from there and it can break this right shoulder stop. There you are at 1080 and from there it can wipe off this head and shoulder formation. It can go higher for me personally. I would love to see it above 1000 and even 1100 because then I know the momentum is up. But I'm a little bit nervous. People has banked a lot of on our commodity shares. They say it can just go higher. Brent oil can go higher. Platinum can go higher. Gold is always in between. It's almost like a safe haven. And that makes me nervous that you bank too much money on commodities. Because remember, commodities are cyclical. Just be careful of that. I mean, if you look at those charts, if you look at the commodity index, the resources, the, the, the index, they're beautiful. So for me, I'm a little bit nervous. So, well, let's see what 2022 is bringing us. Um, I think we're in for a lot of surprises. And don't forget the word bear market or correction. It can happen in markets. Well, visit our website www.franseclair.com for more info and all the best and we'll chat again.